Good morning, everyone. My name is Daphne Dudry, and I will be your moderator for this session. I'm here to support both you and the presenter. So if you have any questions or need help with the Zoom interface, you can uh, use the chat icon at the bottom of your screen, find my name, Daphne Dudry, and send a message directly to me. I will do my best to help you resolve your um, concern. Uh, the title of this session is Google Classroom and Slides, A Newbie's Guide to Digital Assignments. And here's your moderator, Joseph Barros. Hello and welcome. Uh, so yeah, I am, I am Joseph Barros. Let me put this over here. And um, this is Google Classroom and Slides, a newbie's guide. Uh, but before I get into the presentation, my presentation, um, just some things to go over um, for Google Camp. One is um, if you're posting um, any cool stuff you see from this or any other presentation um, on, um, on Instagram or Twitter, please use the, the hashtag iGoogleCamp. Um, if you need any help, um, there is, um, you can in your schedule, uh, in your schedule website, you can click on help um, and you can send a, or you can in the Zoom session, send a private message to your Zoom moderator through the chat option on the bottom uh, toolbar. So either way, either of those are ways that you can get help with either Zoom or your conference scheduling. Um, let's see. So, uh, oh, at the end, um, there, please provide feedback. Um, this will help me and this will also help Google camp, um, make a better, um, uh, a better Google camp every year, like, just like they have been doing. Um, and then also this, this, uh, year, there's going to be a lunchtime equity series and, uh, hosted by Dr. Charles Brown and Dr. Talisa Sullivan. And you can find the details for that, uh, the zoom, the zoom link and all that on the schedule. Uh, in the sked.com. Um, so with that, um, let's go ahead and get into it. So uh, my name is Joseph. Um, I'm a high school teacher. Um, I'm level two Google certified. Um, and um, I also like to think of myself as an innovator slash perpetual failure because that's what they are. Like almost everything in here I've learned because I messed it up first. And that's just how I go about teaching is I, I find something cool, I discover something cool, and then I try it out and then it doesn't work like I thought it would. And then, and then I get better and then I learn and eventually it becomes something as cool as I imagined, sometimes after many, many failures because that's kind of what you've probably gone through your whole career as a teacher. It's definitely probably what you experienced this last spring. It's probably going to happen some more um, this, uh, this coming fall. So you're going to get all this cool stuff from Google Camp this year. Just know that some of it's not going to work right because you and your kids are a little bit different than that teacher or that professional and their kids. And that's just how it works is you take stuff, you pirate it, but then you make it your own. And this is not even true piracy because you're, you're creating and you're modeling for students how creativity happens. Is take different parts and make something out of it. Um, the purpose of this presentation is to explain to you why Google Classroom and Google Slides can be such powerful tools in your toolbox, why you should be using them. Um, at the end of my presentation, I'll redirect you to another presentation in Google Camp going on, where uh, another presenter is going to go uh, into a lot more detail in Google Classroom, like where the buttons are, like kind of on a super, super basic level, um, like how to make an assignment, how to add dates, how to do all the little kind of nuts and bolts. Um, I'm going to have some of that, but mostly I'm going to try to focus on what you can do, what this looks like, and why you should even bother to learn things like how to make an assignment, how to set the date. Um, because if you don't know why it's useful, you're just going to find it hard to be motivated to want to learn, you know, how to actually make all these things work. Um, and uh, before we do that, I want to look at the, the Google form. A lot of you, not everyone, if you haven't done the Google form, that's fine. It was just to give, uh, give me a sense of my audience and it's kind of what I expected. If you're, uh, if you did a lot of, if you did one, two or three, when you filled out this form, um, then this is for you. I'm hoping that you will feel this is for you. This is for uh, people who are really new to Google Classroom. Maybe they haven't used it. Maybe they kind of know what it is, but they're not comfortable with it. If you're a four or five, 
I'm not sure if I honestly will have that much in here that you haven't seen before. Like if you're all in on people like Alice Keeler and Matt Miller and Andrea Sandoval and you're following those people and they're your personal heroes, um, I might have a crumb or two for you, but um, I'm not going to be doing anything that they haven't done and maybe even be doing better. Um, this isn't like a super advanced type course. Um, that's why it's kind of in the beginner strand. So if that kind of makes you feel like, eh, maybe I should go to my backup plan, that won't hurt my feelings. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. Um, if someone could put this join code in the, um, in the in the chat that would really help out because we're not gonna i'm not gonna spend much time on my slides here uh we're gonna be in the google classroom that i set up and so you're gonna go into google classroom and i'll show that in a minute so if this is in chat then i'll have to leave this screen up um, but you're gonna need this join code and i'm also gonna tell you if you're you if you try to use your work email it's probably not gonna work it's just the way that most districts set up their emails mine included so i even made this google classroom on a Gmail that I created, it's probably not going to work. And this code is correct. I'll even show you. I'm going to go over to my classroom. Um, right here, here's the join code right here again. Like I didn't type it wrong. This is the correct G uh, code. So if you're not getting in, if there's a problem, you're going to have to use an email that your employer didn't create because most of them are not going to allow you to join someone else's Google Classroom. If you attend any other Google Classroom presentations, they're probably going to tell you the same thing. Um, for those who aren't sure how, to, uh, finding Google Classroom is easy. You can just search up Google Classroom. And there you go. I'll be right there. You can also find it in the waffles over here, as I like to call them, or the nine dots. And it might be somewhere in here like that. And then you'll click the plus sign, click join class, create classes when you want to make your own if you haven't already. Um, click join class, and then that's where you'll Sorrows, put the code. You haven't shared your screen. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Let me do that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Am I, are you, see, can you see my screen now? No. Host disabled, oh, I'm getting an error says host disabled participant screen sharing. You should be able to do so now. Um, okay. There we go, okay, now can you see my screen? Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, so, all right. So this is the join code, uh, A2CQVHI. Um, and uh, so, yeah, to get into my Google Classroom, you're going to need that code. Um, when you get into, to, I'll go ahead and go over again. Let's break that down. Uh, finding Google Classroom, again, you can just Google it. and it'll be right there or if you click the nine dots or the waffles i like to call them and depending on how much junk you have and they might have to scroll down it could be in there and then the plus sign and click join class and then that's where you'll put that class code and let's see what's been... so and again you got to use a, a work or sorry a non-work email um, so while you're doing that, let's go ahead and get into it. Once you're in the Google Classroom, um, then you see this little GIF banner that I made kind of pointing up because uh, when you first get in and the same with the students, it's going to go to the stream. Um, I like to have the stream off. I mean, might even be do that, doing that by default now and have them go to classwork. And that's where everything is going to be. And right, the first thing I'm going to kind of get into is how I organize classroom. And you can already kind of get an idea of how I organize my classroom. You've got topics over here, the my unit numbers that they can click on. And then they can see all these, all these posts that have to do with any one unit, or they can just scroll down and, and see everything. Um, 
But what the first thing I want to mention is when you're making your Google Classroom, when you make a topic, definitely have a unit number. And then for the assignments, give them this numbering system. Now, how many digits you use is up to you. Um, like I've had primary, you know, elementary school teachers ask me like, I don't know, I don't know if that hashtag and that extra digit might confuse them. You don't necessarily have to have the, the, the numbers. It just depends on how many assignments you're gonna have. You think you might have like triple digit number of assignments, then you probably need the three numbers, you know, over the course of the whole year. If you're gonna have less than that, you could knock off a number. I could actually knock off a number. I don't hit 100. Uh, by the end of the school year. But you want to have that next to every assignment. And um, if you're in the Google Classroom, um, any of these things that you click on, there, there will be some examples, links to where I got some of the inspiration from or just straight up got the idea from. Um, there will also be a little bit of an explanation, kind of a reference of to, you know, why I do it that way or what's in that um, kind of resource that I'm uh, that I'm, I've posted here um, but there's if you go to Al, if you go to Alice Keeler's website and I gave her I gave you a link to her article on this it's also in her book that I highly recommend 50 things to go further in Google Classroom if you go down to sources Alice Keeler uh, and click view material um, I've got actually a link to that book and some other stuff on Alice Keeler um, who is someone I recommend if you don't know Alice Keeler if you're interested in Google anything, classroom, slides, sheets, docs, whatever, uh, start there. If you follow only one person, she's dropping pearls daily on Twitter, on her website. Um, she's been a huge impact on my, on, on, on my instruction and so many other people's instruction. Um, but this, this numbering system, there's some other reasons she gives. The biggest one is um, efficiency in communication. So instead of saying, hey, Jerry, you missed class. Can you go down to unit three and do digital models manipulatives? I can just say, Jerry, go to assignment 13, do that. Jerry, go to number five, go to number 23, right? It gives you a shorthand, not only verbally, but also when communicating digitally. Like, like a, let's say you send a weekly preview of what assignments are gonna be done that week. Um, you could just have a simple list. Today, this week, we're gonna do 14, 15, 16, and 18. So that shorthand can really help in the communication and a shorthand and eliminate some of those times when the students are going like, uh, wait, wait, what assignment did you say? What unit is it from? Uh, no, he's like 14, just go to 14. There's only one thing in here that says 14 or 12 or whatever assignment that you're, you're sending them to. Um, before I go on, I'm gonna, next I'm, I'm gonna look, check the chat, see if there's any questions in there. Um, but uh, next, I'm going to explain like what a sample assignment, what's one way that you can make a sample assignment and you can even use what I've got here as a template. Let me open up the chat. Um, yeah, Alice Keeler, cool. Uh, cool, someone posted the code. All right, cool. Can you share your slides, please? The link of it. Oh, okay, I can do that. If you go into, the, although if you go into, or did someone already do that? Oh, someone already did that. All right, cool. I think it's also in the schedule. Uh, I even gave you a, a, a PowerPoint version, although I've kind of changed it since I did that. So the PowerPoint version is a little dated by a few days. Um, class code. Class code does work. I promise you, if, if you are work, if you're not doing it on a, you have to use a, um, you have to use a personal Gmail. If you if you're on a work uh, account, it will not let you in. Um, there's just no and there's nothing else I can do. Like there's no settings that uh, that I did wrong. Um, it just has to be on a personal Google account. A lot of people are helping out in chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, it will. It just won't work with your G Word, your Word Gmail. Um, so making a simple assignment. The main idea for sample assignments is clarity and brevity. This one even is a little text heavy. Um, not, but I was trying to give you kind of an idea of what it should look like. Um, so I would say steps don't like I, I started out just doing one, two and three, but I noticed when I actually said step one, step two, step three, um, they're more likely to do things in order. Some students, if you just give them one, two, three, ABC, they will sometimes do things out of order. So this is just a reminder that there's an order. Don't do step two if you haven't done step three. And use this as a direction of what to do next. Don't fill this up with standards and why they're doing things and what the purpose is. That's going to be in the, in the assignments and the docs that you're sharing that will show up on the bottom. Or this is the teacher view. 
uh, I believe this, this one actually will show up on your right side with your name already on it, which is great. I don't even barely tell kids to write their names on assignments anymore because Google Classroom just does it for me. Um, that might be a bad habit I'm not training them to do. Always put your name on the assignment, but Google Classroom does that for you. So there's no nameless stuff coming in. Um, but be very mindful of making sure that whatever things are titled that you assign, make it match exactly. Uh, when I edit assignment, so when you create an assignment or you edit it, it kind of looks the same way. Um, you know, you can type in your instructions here and you start adding things, uh, assignments down here. Um, make, be, I try to assign them in the order that they would do them. Sometimes that's a pain, sometimes that's not even possible. Um, so I just make sure that the, the names of everything here matches up here exactly because it doesn't take much for some students to get lost. Um, so step one, click on Google Form X. Google Form X. Now, don't call them Google Slides Y, Google Form X. That's just a generic I made up. Call them whatever you want to call them. Just make sure that the title here matches the title here exactly. Um, and then include things like when you have finished, move on to step one. So they know, to, you just, just trying to be super clear on what to do. So your instructions in Google Classroom, they're just about what to do first. And then when they get into the assignment, that's when there'll be more of the like, here's the standard, uh, or here's what you're gonna do, or notice and wonder, or whatever it is you're gonna do um, uh, for the actual document. And then this last step here, oh, sorry, step two. If, you, if you're just having something to look at, then step two is not, what I have here in step two, maybe not be necessary. But when you're assigning something and they each get their own copy, so you make an assignment and you choose, um, each student gets their own copy, then it's actually not gonna be down here. And if you're in the class, you're probably seeing it's probably gonna be over the right with your name in it, actually even hiding the title a little bit, unless Google Classroom has already changed that because this it wasn't always like this. Um, and then, so I gotta be clear, it's attached to the right. If it's an assignment that's shared to each individual student, make sure you make clear it's attached to the right with your name on the title. Otherwise they'll look at the bottom, they'll say it's not there and be like, Joseph, you forgot to put the assignment in. And no, I didn't, it's just right here, just not the bottom. And then finally, step three, I would add that in. Tell them to click turn in. A lot of them will do the assignment and then X out and leave. And I know, and I tell them, and I train them early on, if you don't click turn in, I have to assume you're not done. So click the turn in button. I will not grade it. I might peek at it and leave comments maybe here and there, but I'm not grading it. I'm not giving you a grade until you've clicked turn in. I, I may not even look at it at all until you click turn in, because I'm assuming it's not done. And add in this, if you click it on accident or want to make any changes at all, click on submit, because some of them, somehow we'll click the big turn in button on accident and then they're like oh i can't write my work it's, it's broken you did something wrong no you click turn in just click unsubmit and you can try it right now it's not going to blow up my email box or anything you can click turn in and if you click turn in you'll see the button will be unsubmit and you can click unsubmit uh, because once they turn in they don't have access to their slides i mean they can look at it but they can't write on it so they have to click unsubmit to get it back to, to write anything on it so have those instructions on there. You might think it's kind of obvious. Yeah, unsubmit, right? But it may not be obvious. So obviously there's some training involved, but I like to keep that instruction in there as a reminder, like if you can't write on it, click unsubmit. Let's go back. All right, and I'm gonna go over three and I'm gonna check the chat. Three is just a quick tip. When you make an assignment, so like, for example, you're gonna create an assignment or a material or a question, whatever you're gonna create. Um, and you know, you've made it and it's time to, um, time to actually do something. Uh, let's see, time to actually assign it. Let's see, so. To type something right so up here you might be tempted let's say let's say you have an assignment you want to make for Wednesday and it's a Monday and you do everything you're gonna do and then you click assign um, don't do that all right don't click assign if your class isn't about to start in the next few minutes instead click the drop down click schedule and then pick the date of your class let's say it's gonna be on the 28th 
And let's say if it's eight o'clock class, I'm going to leave it at eight o'clock or I'm going to change to whenever that class starts. Or, you know, sometimes I like to do it 15 minutes before the class starts. It's kind of up to you, but do it right before class starts. And the reason why is because I'm sure in your teaching history, you've had those moments where kids are like about to come into class, maybe like 20 minutes from now, and you're just doing one last little review, looking through the packet and you notice, oh my goodness, that's a terrible typo. Oh, oh my goodness, they're not gonna get that instruction or, oh, it's steps, it's steps one, three, and four and two is missing and they're all gonna complain, hey, Je hey where, where's, where's step two? It's too late now, what are you gonna do? Go, go make 500 more copies? Like, no, that's not gonna happen. You just have to, now you have to invest some time in explaining there's a step two's not missing. I just messed up the numbering, didn't catch it till too late. Well, if you schedule, not assign, schedule for the last minute up until th things get um, assigned, you know, whatever date you set for assignments that are assigned for each student to get their own copy, um, once it's assigned to each student, once it actually goes in and, and assigns, now you have like 30, 40 documents, however many students are in that classroom. And if you're going to fix an error, you'd have to go into each one individually. You're not going to do that. But if you catch it before it goes into assign, then you can make a, a change on the master before it gets assigned to each individual student. And, and then the kids will never know that 15 minutes ago, your assignment was completely messed up. Um, so that's why always schedule, never assign. So that way you have the opportunity to make uh, last minute, um, last minute changes. Hey, Joseph. Yeah, yeah. Just just about, just... about um, assignments um, in the chat. Yeah, no editing capability once assignment is posted. N not, not as in like do it once and all the kids see it. You can, like I said, you can go into each individual student's assignment and one at a time make that change. But you're, you're honestly not, unless it's a really, really horrible mistake, you're probably not going to do that. Um, so that would be great. Um, I would love to see that happen. I think the, you know, the trick is, is that before it gets assigned, you're only editing one document. Once it gets assigned, it's now you know, 30 documents, 40, however many assignments it is. Um, so um, yeah, that might be the trick. Like it's not necessarily a fix, like a problem they have to fix. It's more like a really cool, awesome new feature. Like how can I edit and change um, one thing on 40 different slides, but just do it once and not 40 times. And yes, tell, tell Google to do that. I don't know how realistic that is, but that would be awesome. Um, until then, schedule, don't assign. Um, can you delete the assignment and start over? Yes, you can delete the assignment and start over. You can do that. Um, their assignment that got created for them will still be in their drive. I don't personally find that a problem unless you're having them go into drive and search for their assignments because whatever gets assigned to them will also be in their Google Drive. Um, but that's not, so the word, if it's, you know, if it's really bad, then you could just delete, um, bring it up, bring up, uh, you know, make a, you know, or make a copy first of the assignment, but before assigning it, go in and make your change. So you could do that too. Um, but, you know, to, to reduce the possibility of having to do that in the middle of class, uh, the best way is to um, um, schedule. And if they've already started working, then all their, then, then, and you make a new, start over, make a new, new copy. It's not going to preserve the old copy. It'll be in their drive, but it's going to give them a brand new blank copy. So that can work, but only if the kids really haven't done much, because otherwise you're making them start over. Um, create a blank document, um, like, like a blank Google form or, or sorry, Google doc or something like that. Uh, blank Google slide. Uh, no, um, but that's pretty easy. Like, I mean, you can make one on your own. Like, on, like you could just make one normally. And then when you create an assignment, you can, um, you can either add, you can just add a link or go into your Google Drive. And then, um, it takes some, might take a minute to load. And then, you know, you can find, you can add whatever you want uh, in, in your assignment and then you just click on it and then click insert. Um, you can also just create it right in here. I usually don't do that because I usually don't make the instructions until I've got all my materials already created in the side, but you can, you can just click create, create whatever you want. And then, um, excuse me, Joseph. Yep. 
Um, I kept posting the same question. Um, when I was adding Google Forms, like a quiz, an assessment, mm -hmm. um, to the added links, um, it would not allow me to add any other of the links that I had, like as a review. So um, it just wouldn't allow it. It said, and so I looked up in Google and to see if I was able to, and they said at this point, at this time, they couldn't do that. And so I also requested they fix that. But have you noticed that, or did they fix that? I'm not 100% sure if I understand your question. So you're saying so, you, you go to add and you, like what, add, go to I added the Google form assessment and because it was the way it was listed as a quiz, I was not allowed to add oh. the other links. So at the same time, I could add them as links within the instruction area, but not into the bottom portion where you just add the links with it, you know, cause I have a list of links that I would oh. always put because I like the visual look to so it. So you're saying it's when you make a form, but it's one of those quizzes where it grades yes. it? Yes. That's you, you bizarre. Because yeah. no, no, I'm able to add all the things I want. I actually haven't been using the quiz function of forms. Okay. Um, so yeah, I it's a quiz function that I'm having like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The quiz function is really cool. And I was actually going to dig into that because I know you can do your choose your own adventure kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I know that then that might be a problem. I, no, yeah, I would. Yeah, I didn't know if you that knew. That, yeah, I didn't know if you knew that if they had fixed it, but I had I looked that up and they hadn't, I guess, fixed that. I don't know. They didn't have that um, ability or capability to do that yet. And that was as of, I guess, the end of May. Um, and so I was, I didn't know if you heard anything about them fixing that little, for me, it's called, it's a glitch. <laughs> no, that's a glitch. Because <laughs> I don't understand why just making it a quiz as opposed to a yeah. regular Google form should mess with anything. No, that yeah. sounds like a glitch. And uh, okay. I'm going to try that out because I was starting to thinking about going into that stuff like that next year for, for yeah. and that would be annoying because um, I guess for right now, you just post those things on their own and it'd be their own, their own number. Um, but yeah, like sometimes maybe it's like, well, no, no, look at this, you know, read this document first or do this first and then do the form. And ideally it's not something where like, you know, why not just have it in one assignment? It's not like a big multi-day project, right? Um, like if everything, everything can be done in a day, I don't want to have it in multiple hashtags. Um, yeah, that's yeah, why I, I don't know. It look, it, to me, it just is more, um, I don't know, it's very it's yeah. visual. They can identify the links once they get, get to it. And so it's more like a review when you add the links all together and then they can just get click straight to the form and take the quiz. And um, so other, so we had to just go ahead and put just like one or two links within in the instruction area. So I was hoping they had fixed it where I could just continue to add the links, but I, I don't know if you, you know, if you can play with that and let me know. <laughs> Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, if you uh, cool, thank you. Someone put the code in. Again, if you're not in the classroom, you got to use a personal Gmail. Your work Gmail will not work. Um, someone asked, "Am I going to talk about slides?" Yes, that, I am going to be going into that very briefly because that's the other pretty much half of this assignment. Um, so um, let's. Hey, um, I just played yeah. with it, and I was able to add two YouTube links to a quiz assignment. Actually, in. to the assignment or in the... Um... No, I did it as a quiz uh -huh. in the drop-down. Okay. created a form, and then I was able to add two YouTube links and assign it to our class. So the Google right. Forms now with the assessment, you can, add now, you can add the other links now? So I went into Google Classroom because we yeah. have one for our school, and I went to Classwork, and I created a quiz. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, it auto populates a form for you. So there mm -hmm. was a form already in there. And then I just clicked on add and then link. And I just put two random YouTube videos in there and I assigned it and it worked. So I don't know if that's what you were trying to do, but I was able well, to get two links that way. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and play with it now because I mean, I, we went over it over and over again as, a, as my team and it would not work. And so when I looked it up back then, it said that the, you were not able to do that. And then we put in the submission, like, you know, the request, please fix that. But um, I, I'm, you know, I'm glad it works or you tried it. So I'll go ahead and play with it. Thank you for that. So um, I wanna get into slides. So. One, uh, if there, like one of the things that you'll see on Twitter that uh, Ms. Keeler will post, and I wholeheartedly agree, is don't use docs, use slides. I, and I'm gonna show you kind of why. I use slides for the assignments where I create for the students. We're actually gonna do something. 
I use slides for everything. The only thing I will use docs instead for is for any kind of research paper where you want them doing like footnotes and stuff like that and citations. Not because you can't do that in slides, but it's so much easier and less tedious to do it in docs if you're going to have them do things like footnotes um, and, and stuff like that because like docs just makes it so easy. There's some really cool add ons, um, stuff like that. Anything else, I do it in slides. And I'm going to examples of why. So like I've got this assignment. Here's some snapshots of one of the assignments I put on. Um, this one is in uh, number 12, if you want to take a look at it on your, on your computer. Um, but if you go into it, what you'll notice is that there's certain things, uh, like I'll go on slide two, they can't select. Like, look, they, look at these instructions here. I can't select them. They can't accidentally disappear because I, I, I had that originally what set me on the path of discovering this, this, this trick with slides is I was starting to make assignments in slides and I had these cool outlines and templates of this like phone I got from Matt Miller's website and then one girl, it disappeared. She accidentally deleted it, but she didn't say anything. She just kept on working around it and, you know, technically it doesn't have to be there for the grade. Like it wasn't really hurting anything, but like it was part of the flavor and the theme. Um, so on this slide, look, none of this stuff can be edited. Over here, this question right here, in this video, right, can't select that, right? But they can click this and type an answer, right? They can click this and watch a movie. They can do that. So um, you can control the slides so that some things they can manipulate and some things they can't. And it's a very simple trick. It's just not obvious. It's kind of buried in there. You're going to click slide and then click edit master. And that is the magic behind slides. Now from editing the master, everything is, is, is changeable. Um, I can see all kinds of stuff in here. I can, I can delete all this stuff. Now, the kids can't, you can't from the main, from the main view, the view they visually, uh, you know, the vision that they're, the, sorry, the, um, the view they're getting at, where they're actually going in and typing answers. Um, because anything you put on the master, they will not be able to manipulate. Now, is it possible that a kid could get his assignment, go in a slide, click edit the master, and start wiping his work, not on your master, right? Because this is something you've assigned so that you just get their own copy. They could, but I've never had that happen because that would not be an accident. That would be very deliberate, and you've got some other bigger issues with that kid. Um, the problem is, so I've never really had that issue come up. It's the accidental deleting that this eliminates. Um, um, now, for these typed and answer, I, that's the one thing I will do in the master that still allows them to type. So to do that is while you're in the master, I'll go ahead and get rid of this one, right? So I'll go back over here. Oh, because I had two copies in there, didn't I? Let's get rid of that. So um, let's see, let's go ahead and put a box back in there to give it some background. And then let's say you want to type a, Type, put something in there so that they can uh, put some kind of response in or type something up. So don't do a text box right next to the text box, the drop down, click that. And then I use subtitle placeholder. And then you drop just like a text box. Um, and I would change the font because it chooses gray and that will make your eyes bleed. Don't leave it as gray. Go up and change it to black. You can change the font, the size, you know, depending on how much you think they're going to type. Um, I wouldn't go lower than eight or 10. Again, you don't want your eyes to bleed. Um, and then if, you know, you can change the font. I mean, if you really want to, you can do bangers, bold, and then, you know, say, oh yeah, let's do a hot green. Uh, I wouldn't do that. That's terrible. But then now, look, I can, whatever they type will, will be there. Um, but uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't make it ugly. <laughs> No, do the ugly. You know, you're the ones that's going to have to type that. Um, and that's how I can make things that they can actually type into. Um, something simple over here, right? Like I have this stuff here. Um, oh, that's all edit the master, except for the, the subtitles. If you want to have links, I learned this the hard way. Again, learning through failure. If you put a link in the master, they will not be able to click it, 
copy paste it, anything. They'll just be staring at it. Like if you want them to be able to click on something and then go to it, um, no, no, no. Like that has to be on top. So what I do is it, whatever link I have, let's go ahead and like, I want that. Like say for this one, I want them to click on this link, read the article and fill these out. So what I'll do is wherever I want, you know, if I want to make my own hyperlink, I'll make a box and I'll usually choose the rounded one, but you can do whatever you like. And then uh, let's say this, I want to turn this into a hyperlink. So I'm going to cover it up and I'm going to click on it, click the paint can, make it transparent. Um, click the, the pencil here. I can change the border color, make it a different color. I can click the border weight right here, make it like three or four if you want to make it really bold. Um, just to give it an outline. And then you click that shape and you get your link, copy it, go back in. Well, I clicked on the shape, then you can insert link or just control K is the shortcut, apply, and then boom, now it's a, now it's a hyperlink. Um, and now that whole idea of like making hyperlinks and hyperdocs, that's its own presentation. And there are presentations on that. I'm not gonna get too deep into that because that's a little more advanced skills, but just something simple like this, like click on this for the source I found for you and then answer these questions. Pretty basic stuff. And edit the master allows you to do that without all this really important stuff just plain disappearing. Um, another thing I will do when, um, and when I'm making these is I'll make these little badges or stamps and you can do badges. If you want to do like a badge activities, I'll make these stamps. I don't put them on the master. I put them on top. I'll usually have like some kind of stop page. Like don't go past here until you see that I've checked your work. And if the work is kind of more just like for completion, now you can always leave comments, right? So you can, um, you can click on, on something and and then control alt m leave a comment um good work but you know, lacks evidence or you know something like that so um uh, when they're working i'm constantly leaving comments like that but uh just to like hey, if it's good work move on i'll have one of these on a different slide and i'll copy and then i'll paste it right boom good job and they know like if they, that stamp is there then it's done. It's just copy paste. It's super fast. Just like in class, if you go around and you're stamping their work, the difference is you can make whatever stamp you want and it's free. I made a bitmoji and then I, I kind of changed the, the shape. If you want to change the shape of an image, uh, like mine's a circle, but I didn't copy paste it as a circle. When you click on any shape, you, you probably know about crop, but if you click on the drop down and choose a shape, it'll change it to that shape. So I changed it click the drop down, shape, circle, and then uh, I got a, you can use a stamp or a badge. In fact, I'll, not only will I do that to improve uh, how fast I'm giving feedback, uh, or feedback um, over here, and number six, feedback, copy, paste. I'll usually have a slide on the side with common comments that I might use. Um, so I can just copy paste them. Like if there's certain, like this, please cite in proper MLA format. Do I really want to type that, you know, 15 times every classroom? No, I could just take that, copy, uh, go back to the kid's assignment and then paste it, right? And move, and move it wherever you want. So that, you know, maybe you do a different color to make it stand out depending on what you're doing in the slides. Um, I made these boxes over here and you can make a copy of this. This is in um, number six. Uh, I made these transparent boxes. So yeah, I might leave a comment in the side, but then maybe instead of this, I want to really highlight this, right? It's see-through. And then I can even um, grab this arrow right here. You know, and put it, you know, right here. You forgot this. Or I can, you know, retype something else, some other kind of um, again, so you can leave feedback really, really fast because um, when, uh, when they're doing their projects, when they're doing their work, when they're writing their essays, um, the way I'll do it, and uh, I'm going to check the, if I see the chat kind of bouncing, I'm going to check, I'm going to do this one more thing and I'll check the chat real quick. Um, if you go to, uh, oh, turn it again, number six. Uh, I'm going to click on this picture right here. I open up all of their assignments and tabs in class and I'm able to tab through their work. 
And that allows me to, while they're writing, not after they're writing, not after they've produced and turned it in, start assessing and giving them feedback while they're doing it. Because if they're, you know, if they're writing their papers by hand, um, the only way you can do that is tell them, stop, let me pick it up, let me read it, and then they're waiting for you to read it. Whereas digitally, they can just keep typing away while you're leaving feedback and you could tab to the next kid, leave some feedback, tab to the next kid, leave some feedback, and then just do it in a cycle. Um, sometimes, like let's assume if the, 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 let's say all of these tabs up here, if these are all different assignments. So let's say I'm looking at this assignment and then, but this kid over here, he's like, wait, can you look at my assignment real quick? Uh, I'll, I can just take the tab, draw, you know, move it over here. That way I'm keeping my cycle. So I'm making sure I'm giving everyone um, time cycling through their assignments and dropping those badges, comments, control alt M to leave a comment. Um, uh, so that, and what that does is that allows you to one, not only be giving them that constant feedback that they need, but it also, me by the end of class, I'll find that I have a lot of assignments done. Like they're done, I've graded it, I put it in Google Classroom, that, that is, I don't have to look at that assignment tonight. And other assignments, because if you have 30 kids, realistically, you're probably not gonna have all 30 graded and done by the end of the day. Some kids may not finish, it gets busy, you're answering questions, you're not gonna get through every single paper in class, but everything's gonna be at least partially graded. So you're getting a lot of that grading done in time while also giving the, those kids the feedback that they need. Um, once, one teacher once asked me, well, instead of doing tabs, how about instead of tabs, you just click the, um, why not that one? Uh, let's see, view assignment. You can't bring something up. So let me open up. Oh, wait, why is there, maybe that's not a good one to use. Oh, oh, we'll do book snaps, all right. Uh, book snaps, so let's say I go to Miss Sarah here. Is it just taking a long time to load? Huh. Why is there nothing in there? It's taking a while to load. Book snaps, try a different one. Could be my assignment. Oh, there, well, that should work. I was sorry about this. I was testing this out earlier. Um, no, that one's a new one. Book snaps was my test case. Oh, uh, why is it not? Okay, there we go. Just had to be a little patient. Um, you can shoot, click their name here and then switch to a different student. But every time you do that, there's a loading process. And depending on your on your on how many tabs you got open and the speed of your computer, that can really slow you down. Now, does it is it very time consuming and it does it involve loading time at the beginning of class to like click on each student and you know, those who, once they, you have to wait for them to actually start opening the assignment. That's why some of these people didn't actually do it, go into the assignment. It also might be loading it slowly. There we go. Um, and I'll, so I'll click on the sign, click on the student, click on the assignment and go to the next student, click on the, click on their name. And again, it's best to wait till they've actually, you know, done something. Um, and then open up all those tabs and it will take some time to load like you see, but it's all front loaded. All that loading happens at the beginning of class. And honestly, you kind of, you know, once they first start writing their first word on the assignment or reading the instructions, it's probably not much for you to leave feedback on anyways. So that's a good time to just open up all the tabs, click on them one at a time, let them kind of load up. And then that's it. Once they're loaded up, there's no more loading. And then it's just a matter of just tabbing through their assignments, leaving those um, pieces of feedback. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and check out the chat. Oh, wait, up here, chat, chat, chat. Thank you for being patient. This is my first time using, oh, I didn't mean to do that, but that's all right, I'll turn it back on. Chat, any questions in the chat? Um, 
Let's see. All right, cool. Oh, good question. What do you mean when you do it on the master? So when you click slide at the master, think of it as in layers. Like any slide kind of has two layers. There's the top layer that you're used to working on and the master is underneath and you can't manipulate, someone looking at that slide can't manipulate um, the bottom, the, the, anything that's on the bottom. They can see it, but they can't manipulate anything on the master. So that's why the thing, so it all gets assigned. It's just that anything you put on the master, when the student gets the assignment, they won't be able to accidentally delete or, or move around or resize or, or basically interact with it at all. They can only see it. Anything you want them to interact, you just put on top, which is in top being like where you're usually, where you're used to working. Um, how to do the stamp. Oh, how to do the stamp, we can do that. How to do the stamp. Check for plagiarism. Yeah, there's some, but that's uh, nothing. I don't have any special tricks for plagiarism. Um, you can copy paste like their first paragraph into Google. That's one way. I think there's some other links that I have for that. I just didn't put them in here, uh, but nothing that's unique to slides. Uh, how do you open all the, yeah, okay. I kind of showed you how to open the tabs. Once the students work, like a lot of those assignments, this is just my trainer in Google Classroom. There was nothing there because uh, the people, it was just for example, like what you're looking at until someone actually opens it, there's nothing to click on. But as soon as those, all the kids have, you know, you tell them, okay, go to Google Classroom, they open up their assignments, then you just go down the, the side and open them one at a time. Um, I don't know if there's a quick way to just, open all. Um, so I just go down the list and open them one at a time. Um, and yeah, you can, you can do the arrow above, but like I said, it, every time you do that, there's another loading. So I feel like that's slower. I like to front load my stamping or front load my own loading. Uh, making stamps. All right. So I'm just going to make um, um, uh, docs new or not docs new. Here's a little quick trick. You just want to make a, uh, a slide real quick, your slides.new or docs.new. And it doesn't, you, any picture works. So I'm just gonna do frog. Maybe I wanna make a frog stamp. Um, and click images, you know, whatever. You get your picture. I made a bitmoji. Just go to bitmoji.com. You, you create your bitmoji and you can have a little cartoon version of yourself. But just for expediency, I'm just gonna grab a picture. So I got this frog here and I wanna make a frog stamp. So I, all I did is, you know, right click, copy image and then you know control v or right click paste got my got my um picture that's a giant stamp i want a small stamp all right boom really small stamp um so you got your picture you got it about the size that you want um click the picture and most and then to, if you if you want it as a square you can leave it as a square if you want to change shapes no, again sorry. yeah i'm sorry can you add, oh sorry uh, sorry sorry i just realized <laughs> Share screen. There we go. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you for being patient with me. Um, all right, can everyone can see that now, right? All right, good. Um, so then, so again, like I, I just, I, I just grabbed a picture because make a frog stamp. Again, it can be any picture you want. Uh, Bitmoji, cartoon, graphic, whatever you got. Uh, you paste it, resize it to whatever size stamp you know, you want that stamp to be or badge or whatever you're making and then uh, click on it. And while clicked on it, if you want to change its shape, there's the crop button, but click on the drop down right next to it. And then whatever shape you pick, it'll, it'll crop it to that shape. Um, with the one that you saw me use earlier, I just did circle. And then if you want to, you can add some border to it. You know, if you want to make it stand out a little bit. And then one other magic trick, and this works for this or any other thing that you make, like even text everything. If you want to make it pop just a little bit, click on the image, click on format, format options. And this is in my Google Classroom if you go down to the tool sections. Um, and then you're going to do click on drop shadow. So click on that. And again, if I was going too fast, that's while you have your picture selected, click format, format options. And then you're gonna click on drop shadow, make sure that's selected, click the down arrow. And the way I was taught and I just do it is take the transparency and drop it down to zero, like all the way to the left. And then you might even notice, uh, let me go ahead and make this bigger so you can see, it's got, let's get rid of, 
these things. A little bit of shadow, just a little bit, but maybe I want more. Well, then you just kind of, you can adjust the angle if you want to change which way the shadow's going, but the distance can make it, can make it, can change it quite a bit. And then the blur radius too. Sometimes I don't want much to, maybe I want all blur and no distance, or maybe I do want something that's more solid. And you just play around with it. And color, um, you know, so you can make something kind of stand out and then make kind of, make it look a little, a little neon -y, you know, something like that, kind of hot pinkish. Um, so th that's a little tricks so if you want to make anything kind of get a little bit of a, a 3D look to it. Um, let me go up here to the chat, see if there's any good questions, because I think we're just about out of time. So there's a lot more stuff in the Google Classroom. If you have questions, you can definitely let me know. Um, before I go back to the chat, I will say, um, again, leave feedback in SCED, but if you could, also, if you get a chance, um, if you scroll down in Google Classroom where it says feedback, please answer these four questions. And then, uh, oh, I didn't change it to 2020. That's all right. Um, it's, I'm still using the same form. If you could fill out these four questions for me, that would actually be really helpful for me as well. Um, because I know we're just about out of time. I'm going to check the chat again. But if you got to go, you got to go. Um, for those who are, are leaving, going to lunch, I really appreciate you coming. I hope this helped you. I hope I did everything I promised I was going to do. Um, let me, and, um, and again, thank you. Fill out the feedback form if you get a chance. And if you have any questions about anything, especially anything I didn't get into, um, yeah, go ahead and um, feel free to email me. Do you add voice and comment to stamp? You can, you can. Do you add voice and comment? That's a, that's a great thing you can do. You absolutely can do that. Oh wait, adding it to the stamp. Mm, you could, like if you made a video or a, or a screencastify and then you can link because you anything you put in, you could hyperlink, right? You can click on that stamp and, or maybe you even, let's say I'm gonna click on this and keep it clicked. I'm actually gonna draw a shape. And if you click on one kind of formatting and then make a new shape, it'll actually carry it over. And you could do things like click me for feedback or click me to go to this website. I've done that a lot. And then click on the thing, um, insert link and a link to the Screencastify you recorded, the YouTube you recorded, whatever, you know, whatever it is. You, whatever audio or video you record for them to look and then and then it becomes a button just don't put that in the master put that in the top level you put it under them in the master and they, they they'll be clicking and nothing is going to happen so that goes on top um yeah i know i'm sorry when, when i wasn't sharing that was yeah i'm sorry um oh oh we saw oh that was when i was i was doing that <laughs> okay are the students able to copy paste my stamp they can they can um um i haven't experienced that because generally my kids like they want to know if it's good because if if they're just putting the stamp on everything then um, um i mean i guess that could trick you i guess it depends on how you're using the assignment usually it's something that's happening in class but again my kids kind of want the stamp and they want the actual stamp for me because they the way i do things having the stamp doesn't give them a grade like if there's a grade there's a grade like i read it and assess it and type it in comments and they can't duplicate that you know in google classroom um the stamp is just be letting them know i saw it it's good move on it's a little bit from my reference so i also know quickly okay what have i looked at what have i not looked at um so i don't think in my class there's a big incentive for them to even try if you think in your class there would be an incentive for them to stamp ahead, then you might want to reevaluate what you're using the stamps for. Uh, yeah, that's when I had everything down. Uh, oh, when I, I don't know if that person's still here. When I create slides, I need to go to Ed the Master before I start working on it. Um, it depends. Um, sometimes I start on top because I'm thinking about what I want them to do first. And, but if I, if I, it doesn't matter, it's just that kind of creative process. You can start in the master, you can start on top. The order doesn't matter because you can go back and forth all you want. Um, just know the bottom, the master is what they can't interact with. What's on top, they can. Uh, I don't, and then, okay. So, so I think I'll go ahead and call it there.
And um, so if you have any other questions, I think there's some more questions I may not have um, gotten to, go ahead and email them and I'll be more than happy to email um, or respond to your questions. And uh, once again, thank you for joining and, um, <laughs> and that's it.